I'm Jancy Despain with Bright Idea Tutoring. This is the fourth video in my series on the Clayson rearrangement. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do the Clayson rearrangement on allele vinyl ethers. This is the aliphatic Clayson rearrangement. Of course, when we do the rearrangement on allele phenyl ethers, it's the aromatic Clayson rearrangement, which is probably the one you're going to see the majority of the time. Most professors don't actually cover the aliphatic Clayson rearrangement, but since a few of them do, I want to take a few minutes and show it to you. And the good news is, it's actually a pretty easy mechanism. Here's a very simple, actually the most simple, allele vinyl ether. And if I was going to do this mechanism, the first thing I would do is consider what my product is supposed to look like. I know that the most simple reaction um, gives us a product that's got a carbonyl, and there are two sp3 carbons between the carbonyl and a carbon-carbon double bond. So again, this most simple allele vinyl ether is going to give us this most simple product. And then of course, the more substituents that this guy has, the more substituents this guy is going to have. So if I want to do this mechanism, the first thing that I want to do is set this up in a consistent way. And that's going to be putting my allele group up and then bending over to the right, and my vinyl group down and also to the right, because this carbon-carbon double bond of the vinyl group is going to be interacting with the carbon-carbon double bond of the allele group. The first step of this mechanism is identical to the first step of the allele phenyl ethers. So if you haven't watched that video, I encourage you to go back and spend time there first. We're going to have this carbon-carbon double bond go out and attack the far end of the allele group. This bond is going to go move right here, and then this bond is going to break, and we're going to form the carbonyl. And then we're just going to report the results of the electron movements that we just did. This bond is now single. This carbon is now bound to this carbon. So we've created a single bond here. This bond is now single because these electrons have moved over here to form a double bond. This carbon is no longer bound to O because this bond is broken to form the carbonyl. That's our final product. Now, you may recall that after this step, when we did the allele phenyl ethers, the aromatic substitution, we had a problem because we had to restore aromaticity to a benzene ring. And we had to take this carbonyl and turn it back into an alcohol. We don't have that problem here. We have a perfect final product. We've done our last step. So the great news about this mechanism is that this is all we have to do. We're totally done. So why don't I give you a more difficult reactant and let you practice doing this for yourself? I think you'll find that it's really easy. Okay, let's say this is our reactant molecule. First, we want to set it up in such a way that it's going to be easy to react with our allele group on the top bent over towards the right and our vinyl group on the bottom, again, bent over towards the right. So let's just do that step first. Let's draw it in such a way that it's ready to do the mechanism. This is what my molecule looks like. And if you had a little bit of trouble with this, let me just quickly show you how I did it. I know that I want my molecule to have an allele group going up into the right and a vinyl group going down to the right. So I drew that without even looking at this. Then I went and looked and said, all right, well, my vinyl group is on this side. So I can kind of match up my vinyl group, all right? And see how this has a trans double bond? So I know I need to kind of move in a trans direction. And this has got an ethyl group. So I just put an ethyl right here and see how it's trans. Mine looks a little different here and here, and that doesn't matter as long as I have a trans double bond down below. We're all set. All right, now here on the top, here's my allele group, and here's my allele group. 
on this first carbon, I've got an ethyl group. So there it is. And on the end carbon of my allele group, I have an ethyl, and it's trans. So again, I'm making an ethyl that's trans on the double bond. So it's a pretty easy process, as long as you're just brave enough to draw your starting material and then just go forward with all the substituents that are attached. All right, so here is our reactant molecule ready to go forward with the mechanism. So why don't you go ahead and draw three arrows to represent our electron movements. And don't worry about drawing your product yet. Let's just get those arrows down and then come back and compare. Here's what I have. The carbon-carbon double bond of the final group goes out and attacks the far carbon of the allele group. Then this carbon-carbon double bond moves over, this bond breaks, and reforms the carbonyl. Now let's draw your final product. This is the final product that I got. Yours might look a little bit different from mine, but they should have the same IUPAC name, 2,3-diethyl, for heptene L. And the way that I got this product is this carbon, which is carbon 2 of my aldehyde, is now bound to this carbon. And you can see we have an ethyl group there. And then going this way, our double bond has moved right here, and then we still have an ethyl group hanging out. And when we compare this to our expected product from one of these allele vinyl ethers, you can see that we do have a carbonyl, two sp3 carbons, and then a carbon-carbon double bond. And then we just have additional substituents added on. So hopefully you'll agree that this mechanism isn't too difficult. I actually prefer this one to the aromatic mechanism. Um, if you have any extra questions, just hit me up in the comments below or contact me through my website. I'd love to help you out.